Welcome to the One Minute Apologist. One Minute Apologist. We interview the world's leading apologists to provide credible answers to curious questions. Dr. Sanford, does science clash with scripture? I strongly feel, and my colleagues agree, that good science affirms scripture. And so that's something uh, to, it's a soundbite that's worth remembering. Good science affirms scripture. Uh, in the last 15 years especially, I believe by God's grace, a great amount of scientific evidence has um, accumulated, which just supports scripture in the most amazing ways. And so uh, the world mostly doesn't know about it. That's why apologists need to learn the evidences that are there and communicate them. The mass media won't do it for us. The politicians won't do it for us. Christian apologists have to be the ones to transmit this information, which will otherwise be suppressed. And so, uh, yes, God in his mercy is giving us evidence. He doesn't need to give us evidence. He didn't promise evidence. He asks us to believe by faith. So if, if without the evidence in faith, we should trust Christ and his word. But in his mercy, he's given us so much evidence. And so uh, the evidence, especially in genetics, is profound. It's just so clear the genome is designed. And the evidence for it is increasing every day. Uh, the ENCODE project, which was one of the biggest science uh, efforts in history, it's similar in genetics to NASA in space science, uh, shows that most of the human genome is functional and that it's functional at many levels. And so we have layer upon layer upon layer of programming within the genome and prego up. No computer program has ever been seen to observe, to arise by trial and error or by chance. Programming requires a programmer. And so when to have programs that are multiple layered, vastly superior to anything computer scientists could, could do today, any reasonable person should, should conclude the genome is designed. And so that's just one layer. You know, we have the, the evidence that we talked about earlier for a literal Adam and Eve. The, the, the human population and its genetic structure today points to a literal Adam and Eve in the not so distant past. Um, evidence for the fall. Is there evidence for the fall? There's too much evidence for the fall. <laughs> and uh, everywhere we look, we see evidence for the fall, but we even see it in the genome. It's degenerating. Mm -hmm. It's clearly, we're dying people in a dying world, and it's, we, it's documentable in terms of the breakdown of our genomes through mutation. So uh, the origin of the people groups, you know, a lot of people would say, well, take, uh, we, we know that the people groups can only be explained by deep evolutionary time and, uh, and lots of natural selection. Actually, the people groups can arise rapidly. When you have the Tower of Babel event, which is described in the Bible, uh, man coming out of the Middle East instead of out of uh, Northeast Africa, they're geographically almost identical. All it takes to create people groups that are genetically distinctive and have distinctive appearance is to, is to break up, take the family groups, the clans uh, that would have existed at the Tower of Babel time and isolate them. And you immediately, you fragment or, or um, you, you basically subdivide the diversity that's there. And, and so you immediately have people groups just by separating the clans. And uh, that can be accentuated through when those clans go into isolation because you know they don't speak the same language so if their neighbors they're going to be warring so everybody spreads out to have peace uh, in isolation genetic drift causes fixation of variants and there's something really interesting called assortative mating mm. it's it's well known that people want to marry someone who's similar to their own family that is uh, people want to marry someone who reminds them of people they love. That's just a really a fundamental instinct. It's very understandable. So basically what that means is that within a clan, uh, there's a certain look uh, that develops uh, by people preferring to, to marry for the characteristics that make that clan unique. And so it helps accentuate people group differences. And I, I, I don't use the word race because really the race is not a useful term. Both biblically, we're, no, we're of one race and we're of one blood, but also now genetically, we know that racial differences are trivial. They're minor, basically the gen genetic differences between you and I and between myself and an Afro-American or, or a person from Asia 
uh, are fundamentally the, uh, the same.